Let me just do one. All right. So when we are trimming, uh, our pot is at leather hard. So at this at this stage, it's it's firm. I can still kind of feel the softness. I can still feel it wet, but it's but it's firm. So at that stage, it's ready to trim. So we've probably flipped it over, and it's been un, uh, flipped over for at least one day, most likely. Um, and at that stage, we need to trim it. So the first thing we need to, to know is how thick is the pot. So I can visually kind of get a sense of, of doing that just with my fingers, but but rather than just feel, I, I want to have a really firm visual of that. So if I take a, a tool and set it over the top, or I take a, a, a bat and set it over the top, I can use then one of my trimming tools and drop it down to the bottom of my bowl, run my thumb or finger down until it touches that bat, and use that as a gauge, and I can come out here, and then I can visually see how thick that is. And I should be able to run my finger under that, okay? Which this, this pot is, is perfect, just a little bit over that, which is good. We're gonna say our finger is a half inch thick. And so as I recommended, we wanna probably leave it between a half to three quarters inch thick, so that's about perfect. Now this tool, okay? Uh, this tool, if you look at it, um, is about the thickness of my finger, okay? Um, and so I want to trim down to uh, a, the point where the, the tool really starts to bend, okay? So at that point where it bends, um, that's how far down I'm gonna trim. Now, if it was less than a half inch, I would trim down less, okay? Uh, more, I would trim more, but that, that point where that tool bends is really the, the point where we want to, to trim down to, okay? Um, the other thing I wanna do before I put this on the wheel and chuck it down is I want to feel where the bottom goes from flat to vertical. And so where it goes from flat to vertical, I'll feel that where that starts to go vertical and I'll make a mark, okay? And that that mark is, is where it, it, it kind of goes flat and then it comes up vertical. And that's the outside of our foot about 90% of the time. Um, and so uh, once we have that mark, that's going to be most likely where we're going to trim the outside of our foot. Okay? Sometimes we might have a mark way in here towards the middle, and then we can move out. I know that from here in, uh, where my mark is here, okay, so from here in, this is all the same thickness. Outside of that, it gets a little bit thicker. Okay? If I have a mark that's way in here, I'd have a top. So I want to make my foot a little wider so it's more stable, um, but um, I, I just can use this as reference. Um, and that's going to be where the, the outside of my foot. At this stage, we're going to tap center. Um, and so tapping center is simply a process where I point at the clay here, and the clay goes away from my finger. I'm going to tap it. And what I'm going to try to do is make it so there's not a wobble between my finger and the pot. Okay? It's helpful if you tr use the trimming stick on your pot when, when you take it off to try to have as much of a circle here as you can. Um, if you have a little bit of a egg or, or an oval to it, it makes that trimming and, and uh, tapping center a lot harder. We are going to practice um, practice tapping center with a, a cardboard cylinder. So once you've trimmed your second bowl, so this is your first bowl, on your second bowl once you've trimmed it, um, I'm not going to have you throw anymore until you have tapped your 25 tap centers and I'll talk about that while we move to that stage. Okay. So I'm going to tap this center. And I want the, the part that I'm going to trim, so the bottom of the bowl, to be centered. I might have a wobble down here, but this is the part I don't want there to be a, a wobble. Okay? That depends on what that bowl was like, if it had a little bit of wobble at the rim or not. Okay? But this is centered here. There is a wobble down here, but that's not the part I'm trimming, so I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to take three pieces of chuck clay, about that big. Um, bigger is not better, so like you just want kind of the little like breakfast sausage kind of size there. Um, and you want these chuck pieces of clay to be firm. So you don't want to just like use box clay. You want that clay to, to have some firmness to it. Um, and so there is a slot in the, in the cart over here that has a uh, chuck clay in it that we put that firmer clay. If someone leaves the lid open, I'll put some clay in there. Um, it, sometimes you have to push it, your clay against the table and just dry it out a little bit so that it doesn't have all that moisture. So it's, it's not as pliable. And then you're going to make a triangle around your piece and push gently down and lock that piece in. I'm not pushing into the piece because it will move it. So I'm pushing straight down. I'm also not pushing all the way to the back and make this really thin. After I've done that, I'm just going to kind of push the corners to the pot. 
and it should be chuck. Okay? Not uncommon that this comes away off its chucks, and if it does, you have to remove the chucks, re-tap its center, and chuck it down. Where our kids get in trouble is they just kind of push the clay back down, and then it's gone, wobbles, and you can't, you can't save it. Okay? All right, so I've got it chucked down, it's on the wheel. So now I'm gonna use this tool. I hold this like a pencil with the loop up, not like this, but loop up. My left hand, thumbs touched. I really don't care how, I just like to lay my left thumb on top. My pointer finger is on the tool itself, and my middle finger is on the pot. So I have kind of a, a feeling of the pot, and I'm stable between my elbows and my, my middle finger. And so now I'm gonna make a, a circle where I drew that line. So this is gonna be the outside of my foot. And we should see that clay come off in a band like that, okay? That's really good. When we see that, that's, that's perfect leather hard. Okay? It kind of comes becomes a little hypnotic watching that. And then I'm gonna come in a, a good healthy half inch and make another circle, okay? So this donut right here, this is my foot. I'm not gonna trim that away. I'm gonna trim this and trim this way out here, but I'll leave this, I won't ever trim that, okay? So now that I have kind of my foot marked, now I'm going to trim it. And so I'm just gonna hold that tool and let the tool do the work. Okay. And I'm gonna trim down to that point where the, the tool kind of bends. Wheel speed, I'd say when you're tapping center, one kick is about the perfect speed. After you have it chucked down, a little faster is, is probably better. If you do wobble a little bit, it keeps it more of a circle. If it's going fast, if it's going slow, you're gonna see that wobble and it's gonna make, make it a lot harder to trim. So if you look here, I've trimmed down to that point where it bends, okay? So we had a, about a perfect bottom, okay? So I'm good on the outside. I'm gonna trim the inside here as well now. Go to that same depth. Okay, so I've established my foot. Okay, again, I'm not going to trim any more of the foot, but I've established my foot. And now I'm gonna, I am gonna. wanna get rid of this inside. So depending on how wide it is, I'm just gonna keep making circles towards the, the middle until I get to the middle. So when we trim, we trim small amounts of clay at a time. And then I'm gonna flip the tool over and use the hoop. And I'm gonna trim the high points away. So I'll trim that away. I might even take this little line and trim it away in two goes. And once I've trimmed those away, now I just wanna make this smooth. So kind of taking that tool and just lightly going back and forth on the right half. We always trim on just the right half of the, of the pot the other half will kind of gouge it. And I'm just making that nice and smooth. Okay. And then I'm gonna trim the outside. Now when I trim the outside, I'm gonna to switch to a different tool. We're gonna to use the pear trimmer. So the pear trimmer is in the shape of a pear. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna hold this a little different. Instead of holding it like a pencil, I hold it kind of in the palm of my hand, keeping it flat. And my, my left hand, thumbs touch, but pointer finger is on the foot. I don't want to trim the foot away. So the pointer finger protects me from getting over top of the foot, the foot away. And the middle finger is just is on the pocket. So I'm just gonna trim this outside clay down and away. Take that down until it's flat and smooth. Now if you look there, okay, that pot, when I use this pear trimmer, it kind of got grabbed there. And so if you look, it's, it's not centered right now. Okay, so I need to take this off really quick. And my chucks are a little on the wet side, but that's why it, it did that. I can even add some of these trimmings that I've kind of done since. And I'm just gonna quickly re-tap the center, so I'm using my foot as the guide. And then I'm gonna take three little pieces again. Chuck those down. So if it does come off, you just gotta re-tap the center, and that, it will get faster as you practice that. When you first start, it takes a while, but after we practice with the, the cardboard cylinder, it will become much easier. So now I've trimmed down, and my foot is really done, but I never want to leave, let this be flat outside here, okay? It's because when glaze hangs upside down, which it will when I fire it, it's gonna probably fall off the pot and stick my pot to the shelf, and your pot will lose to my $100 clone shelf every time, okay? So I'm gonna save my $100 clone shelf as opposed to your bowl. So with that, we want to angle it. That, and aesthetically, I don't think it's as nice, and there's some extra clay here that we need to trim away. So trimming the bottom of your pot is, is a, not just a means to the end because the big guy said you had to. It's also just the idea of we're shaping the bottom of our bowl here. So I'm gonna start to angle this pear trimmer and, and kind of round the bottom 
so that it comes to and meets the foot at an angle. Okay, I don't want a big bulge here. I should just have a nice curve that kind of gradually tapers in to that foot. Okay, so now I've, I've really trimmed my bowl. I never trimmed the foot, but you can see there's a little raised edge here of clay. So I'm just going to kind of scrape that away. So that's gone. And then I don't want this to have a really sharp edge. So I'm just going to use my finger and kind of round that edge off so it doesn't scratch the table after it's been fired. Um, if your clay is a little harder, you might have to trim that, that angle a little bit. But I just kind of want to round that off. Okay? And I'm really done. So if you look at a trim bowl versus an untrimmed bowl, it has a lot of dynamic differences. So the, the foot acts as a pedestal, kind of lift it visually off the table. I get rid of a lot of clay here that was just excess weight. Okay? Um, and uh, it gives the, the foot a, a place so that when we glaze, we can't glaze all the way to the bottom. We have to stop about a quarter of an inch. So when I glaze now, um, I'm going to stop right here at the base of my foot. So it gives a nice visual point for that glaze to stop. Okay? Um, at this stage, I want you to sign it. And you're going to sign it with your first initial, last name, first name, last initial. You can't use initials. Okay? In Ceramics uh, 3, you'll make your own stamp. And then you can start to do your own initials for things because it's a stamp, it's more personal. Um, but using a blunt pencil, a mechanical pencil without the lead, those are those really cheap ones, those are the best things to sign. Don't use a needle tool. That sharp point just doesn't give a, a nice mark. It kind of has clay that kind of bubbles up and kind of it, it just muddies up your, your signature. Being that's your first bowl ever, um, I would also recommend that you write first, 1ST. Okay? It's a special little bowl if your first child. Okay? Um, after this, uh, you don't need to mark all your bowls, so I don't need to mark second, third, fourth, 142nd bowl. Um, you don't need to do that after this, but I think the first one is kind of special. Um, and then wrapping up is a little bit different here too. So we don't need to have the styrofoam bat anymore. That can go back in the bin. This can just sit on your shelf upside down. And when you wrap these up, we want them to dry. Clay dries, and it dries about 18% and shrinks when it dries. So if I let this just dry, uh, it's going to start to compress on itself, and I could see an, an S crack. Okay, so during the day I won't let this sit out, but I just don't want to let it sit out all night. Okay, if you forgot it, you, I'm going to say you're you're probably going to be okay on a bowl, but bigger the pot, the more hand building you do. If you forget to wrap it, it's probably done, then you got to remake it, which is really a pain. So at the end of the day, what we'll do on these because we want them to dry is we're going to do a loose wrap. So I just take my my plastic bag and flatten it out, and I'm just going to lay it on top just kind of push it down, okay? And then air can get at it, but it's not air currents. And then the next day, I'll unwrap it, okay? End of the day, I loose wrap it, and we'll kind of keep doing that until we get to the, the gray uh, looking chalky color of, of, of greenware. Um, and that greenware, uh, we're gonna, we don't have to wrap it up anymore. So once you get your pot to that stage, which will probably be two to three days, since it's winter time right now, probably only two, uh, it needs to sit on your shelf then for two days, unwrapped and once it's done that then you can put on the black cart and um, I'll fire when I get a, a full black cart.